Ripple Labs is a financial technology company. We're helping build uh, what we refer to as the Internet of Value, and we're using distributed ledger technology to do that. What's so special about distributed ledgers? Um, well, it's really the first time the world has been able to move value or money without a central operator. That is really the solution to the problem of siloed payment or money networks. What we're trying to do is build new rails so that the world can move value like we've been moving information for the last 20 years. Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And that was the vision put in place almost 10 years ago. That World Economic Forum video was with the co-founder and the current chairman of the company, Ripple, Chris Larson. Wow, with Bitcoin now over 64,000, we have come a long way. Or have we? The meme coin frenzy hit a fever pitch in the first half of the year as we closed in on 1 million new coins created, bringing the total meme coin count to over 3 million coins. Well, on a day like today, where the market is up nearly 4%, and in the top 100 by market cap, we have the top five performing tokens are meme coins. And so with this shocking statistic, some might argue we haven't really come that far. I think we have come a long way, even with the 3 million, 3 million meme coins that are moving on those same type of blockchain rails that were built by the company Ripple, it's pushing value. Now, it may not be the kind of value you're interested in, but for some, it's a very nice value. And among those meme coins is the largest public company in Latin America by market capitalization has announced the release of their own dollar pegged stable coin into the Brazilian market. And how many major credible stable coins will we have by the end of the year? I put that number at 25. How many by the end of 2025? Well, it could easily be 150, especially if you factor in the number of countries that are likely to have more than five. And this space does not disappoint in keeping me interested on what goes on the blockchain. Now I can create AI text to video, text to images, and text to music with just simple words that I type into a box. And for the music, I can own my own music in seconds on this site, which is called genmusic.ai. And on those same rails, I can choose to license it. I can also choose to transfer it and use a smart contract to prove who the new owner is. Fast forward to today, and the Fed is going to cut rates, probably starting in September. I know a lot of you who are watching as my audience have used your hard-earned money on the digital asset XRP and follow this company as a bellwether of where that use case is going. And so I'm going to take you out of this video with something that went under the radar this year only 157 views, and it's with Ripple's business development director, Joe Volano. And until next time, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye. I'm just going to start uh, with a little background on Ripple as a company and the work that we're doing in CBDC, and then we can get more into uh, the platform that we've built, and, and we're going to do a demo of that uh, for, for the audience here. So by way of background, uh, Ripple is an enterprise software company that leverages distributed ledger technology to offer a range of products uh, to licensed financial institutions. Companies uh, 10 years old, we're based in San Francisco. Uh, we have offices globally. 
And for the past decade, we are perhaps best known for having built a global cross-border payments, payments and messaging infrastructure network. Uh, that, that network is active across 70 some odd countries um, and 120 some odd currency pairs uh, with 300 regulated finan financial institutions, currently moving billions of dollars uh, globally. Uh, we built that network on the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger is a uh, public permissionless blockchain. It's been in production uh, for a decade. And uh, it's got a great track record of being a very robust core technology. So we've taken that, that solution, that, that ledger, and we've architected a private version of that public ledger. And that, that forms the base of our CBDC platform. On top of that ledger, we've built a series of applications for different stakeholders in the CBDC ecosystem. And under the supervision of the central banking authorities or monetary authorities, designated stakeholders can inter interact with CBDC and manage it according to the requirements of the nation. So that's what we've built. Um, we have been pursuing our CBDC strategy as a business for the past several years. And I'm pleased to say that we've had uh, very good proof points back from the market to include a number of industry uh, awards and recognitions that we've received from different third-party analyst groups. And uh, nothing is more important to us um, than the partnerships that we've built with different countries. We're, we're honored to be working globally with uh, many central banks. I think we've, we've publicly released uh, six uh, governments that we're working with. Most recently, we announced a partnership with the National Bank of Georgia. We're honored to be working, working with them. Uh, we have uh, several others that we're working with uh, privately. Um, all of those projects are uh, unique and different. For us, um, they're a fabulous opportunity to go in and learn about the country and um, offer our solution um, to, uh, to their CBDC uh, objectives. The uh, Ripple platform is, uh, leverages the foundational attributes of distributed ledger technology, security, resilience, privacy, auditability, and enables uh, monetary authorities to uh, manage the full life cycle of their digital currency. Um, think about traditional money, uh, money management and printing um, as it's historically done. We've borrowed those concepts um, to enable central banks to mint, manage, uh, distribute, transact, uh, burn CBDC, and onboard participants into the network so that they can interact with CBDC as well. That might be commercial banks or other designated stakeholders. Uh, the platform enables uh, different versions of programmability, and programmability uh, means different things um, from a technical standpoint um, as well as operationally. But there's a lot of native core functionality on the ledger. And I highlight that because a lot of times when we talk about programmability, people immediately think of smart contracts. We do have a fully EVM compliant smart contract functionality where that's necessary, but it's oftentimes it may not be necessary. In fact, at times it could introduce unnecessary risk to the ecosystem. So the ledger has a lot of core functionality that would enable programmability around payments um, that can oftentimes meet the needs of um, different, different use cases. The platform is uh, very low energy use. It's a, a, a product of our unique um, consensus mechanism that uh, is not proof of work or proof of stake and, and highly consumptive. I um, mean, we think that's important when you think about uh, retail CBDC, potential volume tra of transactions that will be required at scale. Um, we think energy, uh, energy usage is a very important topic and it's, it's a point that we like to highlight. Um, obviously, you know, I mentioned our history as a company and the ledger having a decade in production. We see that as a key attribute uh, to our credibility and telling our story. Over the past decade, uh, we've built up uh, real-world enterprise infrastructure integration expertise, and, um, and, the, and the technology that we are leveraging has been in the market uh, in a real-world environment for, for that amount of time. Um, and we think that's a distinguishing uh, feature to highlight. I was interested earlier listening to um, 
Evelyn Whitlocks of the ECB talk about different ways that uh, the digital euro will be accessible in the eurozone. Um, I think she mentioned three different uh, ways. One was uh, through an ECB-issued wallet. One would be through a bank-issued wallet. And then uh, the third was sort of on a card concept. And when I heard that, I internalized the complexity of that ecosystem and what will be required. And that's what we think about at Ripple. We think about a f CBDC as a full ecosystem that encompasses different instruments, different actors, and ultimately different use cases. So when we think about different instruments, yes, we're talking about central bank digital currency. We're also talking about private money. We're talking about stablecoin, tokenized deposit. We might be talking about native cryptocurrencies. All of these things we anticipate coexisting in some fashion in a mature marketplace, subject to regulatory frameworks uh, that allow for them to interoperate along different corridors. But we're building for that, we're building for that future. Um, different actors, we have direct participants that will hold accounts at the central bank. We have indirect banks that might, uh, might uh, access CBDC through uh, through those, um, direct, those, those other commercial banks with central banking accounts. Um, we anticipate non-bank financial institutions having access to CBDC in some capacity. Developers building applications on top of CBDC platforms subject to the controls of a central bank. Um, and then ultimately merchants and end users, people transacting at the counter, um, being, having wallets and being able to spend, uh, spend CBDC and receive CBDC. That's a, that's a mature ecosystem. Um, and that, that, that is, uh, there's a lot of actors in that ecosystem, and it's, we, we think that, that is the direction of travel um, that, that we're on. Um, the primary use cases that, that, we, that we see and envision that are really foundational to making that work, I think of three of them. Uh, one is domestic retail payments as a replacement for cash. Another one is, uh, is cross-border payments, which we have a, uh, a lengthy history in. And then finally, uh, interbank wholesale settlement. Um, obviously, there are a ton of use cases, many of which we wouldn't even contemplate today. But we're building with that foundation, and we think those three uh, use cases are going to be, at least in the early beginnings of adoption, very important. So. The platform that we've built, and, and I'm displaying an overview of the architecture, the heart of it, the heart of it sits in the, in the middle here in the ledger. And that is, um, as I said earlier, a private version of the public XRP ledger. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a ledger that um, is highly performant, um, it's scalable, and as I said, uh, uh, probably for the second or third time now, it's been in production for a decade, which I think is is super valuable. On top of that issue, we built a series of applications that enable different stakeholders to interact with that ledger as, as appropriate. So we have an issuer. An issuer is an application designed for the monetary authority. And it enables the monetary authority to manage the full life cycle of the digital currency, and including onboarding participants and distributing that CBDC to participants in the network that they designate. Some of those participants might be commercial banks or other financial institutions. And we envision their access of the, of the uh, ledger through what we're calling the operator. The operator is an application that will enable, it's an enterprise application that will enable those stakeholders to move CBDC for different purposes. Maybe liquidity management, maybe, um, maybe settlement, using CBD settlement uh, to settle securities, um, or or passing it in or on to their, to their consumers in a retail wallet, um, whatever their business cases might be. Um, and then we also, we also uh, have a strategy around wallets. We have some wallets internally at Ripple that, that we've built, and we're also partnering with some of the best-in-class wallet providers in the market. Um, partnering is, is core to the strategy because I think the reality is that um, delivering a CBDC at this stage is, is really beyond the means of almost any one company in the market. There's so much that goes into a CBDC from the technology to the legal and regulatory to the implementation, to the infrastructure, to the maintenance. And so we find that partners play a key role in that and, and, and certainly wallet providers are a critical component of the ecosystem. Um, we have many wallet, wallet partners that we work with because 
Every market is different, and the technology of choice in one environment might not be suitable in another environment. So we look to find the best solution for that particular partner. And then I've already mentioned some of these, uh, some of these attributes of the CBDC platform. Um, one, one that I'll highlight is uh, around the native functionality, and I, I talked a little bit about programmability earlier. The XRP Ledger has a lot of native functionality um, that it, it was designed specifically for issuing currencies. Um, and it, has, it has key attributes that will enable things like uh, tracking transactions, which are important to uh, regulators. Um, and it will facilitate auditability and compliance in ways that we think will add, will add uh, to financial stability at the end of the day as these, as these products are scaled. And so we think some of those native features are, uh, are super compelling aspects of the, of the, of the solution. Um, and then obviously it's a DLT. So typical DLT type uh, solution includes things like atomic settlement, um, you know, scalability, real-time payments, and all of those other attributes. 